Now he goes on to the second type of advice. As for business, a man may think if he win that two eyes see no more than one or that a gamester seeth always more than a looker on or that a man in anger is as wise as he that hath said set over the four and twenty letters or that a musket may be shot off as well upon the arm as upon a wrist and such other fond and such other fond and high imaginations to think himself all in all <coughs> But when all is done, the help of good counsel is that which setteth business straight. So he says, now in the case of business, in the case of business, maybe it is uh, some kind of a trade or maybe in your job. After when you are good, when you become good at your job, when you become an expert, you tend to become arrogant. And then you might feel, I don't need the advice of anybody else. That is what he says. When a, a man may think, if he win, that is if he win in the sense, if he is successful, he might think that two eyes see no more than one. He says, why do I need another person's advice? Why do I need another set of eyes to see? I have my own eyes. I can see and that will do. He will not give value to the, the advice of another person or a gamester. A gamester is a gambler. Uh, uh, he too might think that he doesn't need, he knows the game better than a person who is standing and looking at the game. He knows it better, he thinks. And then uh, he also feels that a man in, or that a man in anger is as wise as he that had said over the four and twenty letters. So a man in anger in the sense that if a man is an expert, even if he's angry, he feels that he can take the right judgment than a man who's standing apart and uh, talking very patiently so saying uh, said over the four and twenty letters maybe uh, i think is a technique like when people say that when you are very angry you shouldn't think or you shouldn't make decisions you should always sit down and relax they sometimes tell you just count count from one to ten by the time your mind will be uh, you will cool down and then you decide don't make decisions when you are angry so then experts might say that i am always very good in my decisions even when i'm angry my judgment is always right and or maybe uh, another example that a musket may be shot off as well upon the arm as upon the rest a musket is a gun you can just uh, um, search and take a look at the picture of a musket. A musket is a gun which is which has got a long barrel, almost some five foot. And so usually uh, people, uh, there is a rest on which it is kept because it's difficult for a man to hold it because it's so long. So usually a rest, a wooden or a metallic rest is there. You keep this gun or the, what is it, the musket on it and then you take aim and shoot. But sometimes some people become so overconfident that they say that I don't need a rest, I can just hold it in my hand and shoot. But sometimes all these decisions may go wrong. So they might have such fond and high imaginations. Means they may think that they are very smart and they may uh, make such foolish decisions. But when all is done, the help of a good counsel is what setteth business straight. But the fact is that always business benefits from good advice given by a man who knows about it. And if any man think that he will take counsel, but it shall be by pieces asking counsel in one, man, one business of one man and another business of another man, it is well, that is to say, better perhaps than if he asks none at all. But he runneth to danger. So he says, okay, if a man decides to take advice, some people might think, okay, let me take advice on this issue from this person, on that issue from another person. So he says, it is if you're going to do that, it's better not to take advice at all because it has two dangers that is taking advice from too many people has two dangers one that he shall not be faithfully counseled 
for it is a rare thing except it be from a perfect and entire friend to have counsel given but such as shall be bowed and crooked to some ends which he hath that giveth it so he says that is not safe to take advice from too many people you have to take advice from a perfect and an entire friend because other people who give you advice might have some crooked ends they might have some hidden agenda when they advise you they might want you to fail maybe or they may not they may not know about what they are talking they may not be an expert in that field so it is better not to take advice from too many people the other that he shall have counsel given hurtful and unsafe though with good meaning and mixed partly of mischief and partly of remedy even some people may give you advice which might be hurtful and unsafe maybe partly of mischief partly mischief in the sense maybe they have some evil intention they want you to fail or uh, maybe of remedy in the sense they have no intention of hurting you so this decision if you act on it it might create trouble partly remedy and partly mischief and he gives the example of a physician a physician even as if you would call a physician that is thought good for the cure of a disease you complain of but is unacquainted with your body and therefore may put you in a way for a present cure but overthrow your health in some other kind so cure the disease and kill the patient so he gives another very very poignant and telling example he says sometimes if you go to you have an illness you go to a doctor and this doctor knows nothing about you he is unacquainted with your body and so he might give you a prescription that might work for the particular disease for the present cure but then he may not be aware of the side effects that's why overthrow your health in some other kind means maybe that medicine is not actually suitable for your body maybe uh, like for instance and i'm not very an expert on uh, medicine but then uh, suppose uh, you have a problem and uh, the doctor tells you okay uh, that you uh, have to add more salt in your food and you add more salt and then as a result you already had this case of hypertension which or or uh, high blood pressure and there you know that salt is not good for you so this doctor not asking you about your other health issues he prescribes a medicine for this disease but inadvertently that very remedy makes or it worsens another problem that you had in your body and as a result this is cured but you may end up dying okay so that is the idea so if the person you seek advice from doesn't know the whole thing uh, if he doesn't know what business you are engaged in you ask him an advice about your business if he knows nothing about it if he doesn't know a person who gives you advice should know a lot of things it's not enough if he knows just that particular issue so he should know about the market he should know about uh, uh, the business he should know about the kind of um, you know, so many other issues related to that only then he can give you a wise and a complete advice otherwise like the doctor who doesn't know about your body prescribing a medicine for you uh we we have heard of uh, some injection some people are allergic to certain injection so if a doctor you go to the doctor with a certain problem and this injection is the remedy for it but if the doctor doesn't know if that you are allergic to this medicine this very injection can lead you to your death isn't it so always when you seek advice seek it from a person who knows you fully that is why good doctors will always ask you when you go to a doctor good doctors before they prescribe you medicine they'll ask you are you allergic to this have you taken this medicine before um, have you had a headaches or anything when you take this medicine only after they ask you all then they'll give you a medicine that is what a good doctor does but if it is not a very good doctor he might give you a medicine to solve this problem alone not knowing that you have many other problems which may be aggravated because of this medicine so that is the idea there 
But a friend that is wholly acquainted with a man's estate will beware by furthering any present business how he dasheth upon other inconvenience. So a good friend, a friend who fully knows about you and your business. Estate here means your business. Uh, what are you involved in? Are you involved in any other business? If you do this, will if you take this decision, will it have a bad effect on something else that you're doing? All that he will think of. And he will give you uh, how he dasheth upon other income dasheth upon I think how we'll encounter so he will think of all that if he does this he might have a problem there so he will think of all that and give you very good advice so that nothing else will be affected in a bad manner and therefore rest not upon scattered counsels they will rather distract and mislead than settle and direct so he says so don't go in for scattered counsels means don't ask too many people for advice because that will only distract and mislead instead of settling and directing us towards the right solution so that is what bacon tells us about taking advice from friends now we have come to the last paragraph of the essay after these two noble fruits of friendship peace in the affection and support of the judgment followeth the last fruit so he says i have come to the third one third benefit what was the first benefit peace in the affections in the sense that relief of your passions by sharing second was support of the judgment how a good friend will give you good advice and give you good judgment of things now he says i am going on to the third and the last one which is like a pomegranate full of many kernels you know the pomegranate fruit you peel it open there is this hard cover you peel it open you have a lot of red shiny uh, kernels inside so he says that is the third one full of many kernels I mean aid and bearing a part in all actions and occasions. So there are so many things that a friend, just like a pomegranate with many kernels, true friendship can help us in so many ways. Here, the best way to represent to life the manifold use of friendship is to cast and see how many things there are which a man cannot do himself and then it will appear that it was a sparing speech of the ancients to say that a friend is another himself for that a friend is far more than himself so he says you just have to sit and think a cast and see means just cast your thoughts on it and think of how many things you have to do in life there are so many things how much can one man do by himself and then you will understand what the ancients said the ancients have said that a friend is another himself okay to have a good friend is like to have an, another of yourself because a friend some and he says more a friend is more than himself sometimes a friend can do things for you that you cannot do for yourself men have their time and die many times in desire of doing some things which they principally take to heart the bestowing of a child the finishing of a work or the like he says men have their time means all of us have a time in the sense that we will uh, uh, there is a certain span that our life has death will definitely come to us that is what he means by men have their time and die many times die many times he doesn't mean that a man dies many times what he means to say is many a time people die without fulfilling their dreams that is what he means die many times in desire of some things which they principally take to heart they might have some uh, something very dear to their heart maybe it's the best having of a child starving of a child in the sense maybe they had some plans for the child they wanted to secure the future of the child or maybe they wanted to finish a work maybe it's a project a dream project that a person wanted to complete maybe it's a building of a house starting of a business something that he wanted to do uh, or the like some such thing but unfortunately they may they may die an untimely death 
and all these things that they wanted to do will remain incomplete halfway through and in such cases if a man have a true friend he may rest almost secure that the care of those things will continue after him so if you have a good friend you can die in peace because you can be assured that your friend will carry forward your dream that your friend will take care of your child he will make sure we have so many cases isn't it when a person dies how his friends they provide for the family uh, how a project that was left halfway through the friends join in and they continue the project uh, onward so that is what he says so even if you are not there if you have a good friend that friend will do the things that you could not do he will take care of maybe your family he will complete the project that you left halfway through so that is what he means by saying if a man have a true friend he may rest almost secure that the care of those things will continue after him so that a man hath as it were two lives in his desires so it's almost like a man having two lives one whatever he could do when he was alive he did whatever he couldn't do his friend will do a man hath a body and that body is confined confined to a place but where friendship is all offices of life are as it were granted to him and his deputy so he says every person every man is confined to his body you can be only at a certain place at a certain time though you want to be in 101 places you want to go there and be there at that office you want to go there and meet somebody you want to go there and do something else but then you have this restriction you can be only at one place at one time but then if you have good friends you can be at one place but all that you want to get done they can all be accomplished because you can depute it to your friends you can send a friend there to do that particular job you can send another good friend to the other place so that he can do it for you so all that you desire can happen so that is what he means by saying a man hath a body and that body is confined to a place but where friendship is all offices of life are as it were granted to him and his deputy so he can depute things he can depute his friends to fulfill his wishes to do his work so uh, those who have good friends know that is true you can always uh, tell your friend see i can't go there will you please go there and do it instead of me and when a friend tells you to do that you to do that isn't it so uh, somebody is coming uh, to the airport and you can't go there to pick it so you tell your friend so please go there and pick my friend up so you can always depute your friend to do things for you for he may exercise them by his friend how many things are there which a man cannot with any face or comeliness say or do himself so he says there are other situations where uh, you may not be able to go and uh, talk to a person because it might be very embarrassing for you you can't maybe you have done something wrong you want to apologize to a person but then you are so ashamed that you can't go and do it in person uh, so uh, so then in such cases what do you do you 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 tell a friend see you please go and you be a go between suppose there is a misunderstanding between two people so what do you do you you don't have the courage to face the other person so you might uh, call a friend of yours and say see this has happened between me and that person will you please go and talk to him and set things right will you please clear the misunderstanding another person can do things that you cannot do okay so that is what is said here a man can scarce allege his own merits with modesty much less extol them sometimes uh, there may be a situation where you will have to talk about yourself so how can you go and say see i am uh, such a great man i have done this i have done that so will you please do this for me you can't do that instead you send a friend this friend can go and uh, introduce you tell the person about you and get things done 
Hmm? So a man can scarce allege his own merits with modesty, much less extol them. A man cannot sometimes brook or supplicate, supplicate or beg. So some there might be instances where you will have to go and beg somebody to help you. But a friend can do it for you. Uh, the friend can in, be an intermediary. He can go and talk to the other person. He can uh, uh, not beg actually. He can talk for your um, in your place and a number of the like. So there might be many difficult situations where you can't personally deal with it. In such instances, a friend can always intervene and be of great help. But all these things are graceful in a friend's mouth, which are blushing in a man's own. Okay, so there are things when another person says it, it sounds perfectly all right. But when you say it, it may not sound good. So again, a man's person hath many proper relations which he cannot put off. A man cannot speak to his son but as a father, to his wife but as a husband, to his enemy but upon terms, whereas a friend may speak as the case requires and not as it sorted with the person. Isn't it? That's another thing. You know, how, how, how well Bacon has observed people, observed life. That is something I always, you know, I'm taken aback when I read a Bacon's essays. So he says, see, we all have certain roles to play. To, uh, to a son, uh, a, a, a father can talk only as a father. To a wife, he can only talk as a husband. To an enemy, he can only talk in that terms. But suppose there is something, there is a misunderstanding between your son and you. Especially he is talking about men, between a father and a son. And the father may find it very difficult. Maybe the father spoke rudely to the son. Maybe he said something to the son that he shouldn't have said. Same way, maybe the son said, uh, spoke very rudely to the father. In such cases, it might be very difficult for the father, as a father, to go and apologize to his son. So in such instances, what he can do is he can ask a friend to help. A friend can go and talk to the son and tell him, see, that is not what your father meant. Or the father or your, your father only wanted uh, your good. That is why he said that. It's not because he hates you. So even when there is a misunderstanding between the husband and the wife, a good friend can intervene and set things right. When there is a, a problem with an enemy, there again a friend can go and intervene and help out to clear things. All this a good friend can do. But to enumerate these things were endless. So he says, if I go on, I can go on talking about the benefits of friendship. Enumerating is uh, telling them one by one or enlisting them out. I am not going to do that. But to enumerate these things were endless. I have given the rule where a man cannot fitly play his own part. If he have not a friend, he may quit the stage. So he says, this is all that I am going to say in conclusion. If you can't pay your part properly and if you don't have a friend, the best thing is to quit the stage. Okay. So what he means to say is that to live your life fully and to encounter certain situations in your life, you definitely need a friend. You cannot manage everything on your own. There may be certain roles that you cannot play well. If you don't, if you have a friend, you can assign that role to that friend and he will play it for you. If you don't have one, the best thing is to leave the stage. Means it is advisable, it is most advisable to have a good friend because a good friend is the greatest asset that a person can get. A good friend can help you tide over the most crucial and the most difficult times in your life. Okay, so that is what Bacon tells us about friends in his essay of friendship. And as always, we fully agree with almost everything that Bacon has said here and this is exactly why we say that Bacon is a universal writer and that he is a writer and essayist of all times because these uh, ideas that he had written so many centuries ago still remain true even today. 
and that is because Bacon was a great observer of life. He was a very shrewd person who saw into the truth of things. So let us continue to read Bacon and to admire him and to give credit for the brilliance of his intellect.